Hello friends, welcome again to a new session and today we will discuss Open Graded Friction Course OGFC as given in IRC 129-2019 and also some provisions of ASTO have been discussed here. OGFC is a thin open graded asphalt wearing course which has been successfully used in many countries. This is an asphalt mix that contains only a small proportion of fine aggregate creating a pavement with a relatively large percentage of air wires. And these mixes are primarily composed of single size coarse aggregate and generally have a high asphalt content. These interconnected air wires provide improved surface drainage. The rainwater drains vertically through OGFC. These are the structures of three asphalt mixes, dense graded, gap graded and open graded. A dense graded structure is a well graded HMA which is intended for general use and it is almost impermeable. The goal of gap graded mix is to create stone on stone contact. For example, in case of stone matrix asphalt, it maximizes the rutting and resistance against durability. And the third is open graded. This mix is designed to be water permeable. These are designed for a minimum air wires of 15%, but there is no limit of maximum air wires. This gap graded asphalt mixture can be used in several locations in heavy rainfall area and the open nature of pavement will allow water to permeate and prevent splash and spray. This also reduces the risk of vehicle hydroplaning which can be a serious danger in certain areas where drainage is an issue. In addition, the storm water runoff from OGFC is typically cleaner than that from dense credit pavements. Number two, high friction needs. At places where there is a requirement of high friction, OGFC can also be used to increase safety in scenario where high surface friction is needed to prevent accidents. Noise sensitive areas like residential settings and other similar area, they are well suited to quiet pavements represent a good opportunity for OGFC applications. And high volume or high speed traffic, use of OGFC in a high traffic volume or high speed setting is also beneficial as this helps keep the pores of the pavement clear. In addition, these often represent some of the areas where their noise, noise reduction properties will provide the most benefit. But there are few concerns also. The aggregate structure of OGFC makes them particularly susceptible to raveling. And therefore, to avoid accelerated raveling, their use should be avoided in areas where snow and ice occur. Chains, studded tires and snow plows are known to aggravate raveling in OGFC. In addition, particles on the roadway, particularly snow removal part materials such as sand and salt, can clog up the pores in the pavement and limiting their drainage capability. And third point is, snow plows have also shown a tendency to deteriorate traffic markings on such pavements. OGFC also do not perform well when high stresses are expected from turning. One should remember that OGFC is more expensive per ton than dense graded HMA. But the density of this mix is lower, which to some extent offsets the higher cost. And this mix has high amount of air wires and therefore anything that tends to clog these pores, for example, dust, de-icing sand or even low speed traffic can degrade the performance of OGFC in field. The materials required for design of OGFC are similar to what which we have discussed for SMA. We need bitumen. The binder should be either a VG40 or it can be PMB or CRMB. But whatever be the type of binder, it should be tested as per IS code. And if it is a modified binder, then it should comply with IRC specification given in SP53. Aggregate, there are two types of aggregate. One is coarse aggregate, another is fine aggregate. Coarse aggregate is the one which retained on 
4.75 millimeter sieve it should be hard and crushed stone aggregate having the properties as given in this table the grain size analysis should indicate that there is not more than 2% passing 75 micron sieve combined fluffiness and elongation index should be less than 30 abrasion value less than 30 impact value less than 15 polished stone value should be more than 55 and durability test should also be conducted and particularly becomes important when water absorption is more than 2 percent fine aggregate is defined as the passing 4.75 millimeter and retained on 75 micron sieve it should be 100 percent crushed or manufactured sand resulting from crushing operations the fine aggregate shall be clean hard durable of fairly cubical shape and free from short pieces and the sand equivalent test value for the fine aggregate shall not be less than 50 it should be non plastic generally fillers are not preferred in ogpc but to improve anti stripping properties of the mix hydrated lime or limestone dust can be used in a small quantity stabilizer it will be pelletized cellulose fiber to control the drain down and dose should be around 0.3 percent by weight of the total mix but it is decided based on drain down test drain down test is given in astm d6390 and we will discuss it in the later part of this session the cellulose fibers which are to be used in pallets they will have maximum fiber length of 8 millimeter ash content maximum of 20 percent of non-volatile oil absorption of these fibers should not be more than four times of the fiber weight and moisture content should be less than five percent by weight combined grading of aggregate coarse aggregate and fine aggregate should be give as given in this table the nominal size of aggregate is 9.5 millimeter and ogfc is generally laid in a thickness of 25 millimeter and you can see here it is a gap graded concrete because many sizes are missing from this grading. OGFC mix is designed using ASTM D7064 method and I will explain this procedure in eight simple steps. The first step is to determine the wires in coarse aggregate PCA and this is the step is similar to what we discussed in the design of stone matrices fault. Take the aggregate retained on 4.75 mm sieve and wash the coarse aggregate determine its dry eroded unit weight in accordance with ASTM C29. And how it is done? It is done like this. That take a cylindrical measure of 10 liter capacity and finds its volume by filling the water. Place oven dried aggregate in three layers and each layer being compacted with 25 strokes of a tamping road. Find the weight of the aggregates to fill the measure and find the density of the dry aggregates. And then you can find out the wires in coarse aggregate using this equation. Now, this is the unit weight of coarse aggregate fraction in dry eroded condition Ys, which is G minus T upon V. G is the weight of measure with aggregate, T is the weight of empty measure, and V is the volume of the metal measure. And then if you know Y as you can find out VCA in DRC that is dry eroded condition GCA into YW minus YS upon GCA into YW. Here GCA is the specific gravity of the coarse aggregate. YW is the unit weight of water and YS as calculated up here. And you can find out what is VCA DRC in the aggregate. Step 2 is select trial bitumen content. IRC says minimum binder content in OGFC should be 5.5% and therefore a good starting point may be 5% for mixes with aggregate specific gravity of less than or equal to 2.75. You can start with 5.5% also. Now third step is select three trial gradations. And these gradations are to be selected within the range suggested in IRC 129. One gradation can be at the midpoint. The second gradation can be on the red side, on the left side of the range, that is on coarser size, and another could be on the finer side. Then 
prepare 12 martial specimen four specimens at each of the three trial gradations add selected binder content mix aggregates and fiber dry and then add the bitumen specimen shall be compacted with 25 blows on each face that is important here that we prepare the martial specimen with only 25 blows on each face because here requirement of air wires is high and then determine the volumetric properties of each set of specimen calculate vma percent air wires and wires in course aggregate as we do in any mixed design using marshall method and you know all these parameters that is vma is wires in mineral aggregate and vca is wires in course aggregate now this is important parameter here so out of three aggregate brands which we selected the design brand will be which will have vma which are more than minimum requirement and vca less than vca drc the step five is determination of optimum binder content once you decide the aggregate blend then we find out optimum binder content and optimum binder content we decided based on design air wires content which is generally 20 percent the remaining mixed properties should meet as given here that bitumen content should not be less than 5.5 percent cellulose fiber 0.3 percent vma minimum 25 percent vca should be less than vca dry rolling condition and rain down should be maximum of 0.3 and tsr 80 percent or above the sixth step is drain down test and this i have explained earlier also in my video on stone matrices fault for this test you need a force draft oven which is capable of maintaining temperature at 120 to 175 degrees centigrade you need a plate or a container capable of withstanding oven temperature required for the test and a standard basket which is 165 millimeter deep and 108 millimeter wide now this basket is double layer basket the inner basket is smaller in size and the the inner basket is almost capped at a 25 millimeter platform from the bottom of the wire basket assembly and you need a balance so for drain down test prepare the mixed sample at selected binder content and fiber content place the sample in wired standard basket and then take the weight of this sample including the basket take the weight of the plate now because this basket will be placed in the oven on a plate or a container or a tray so we take the weight of the plate or container or the tray and then place the basket on this tray and keep it in the oven for one hour after one hour you find out how much bitumen has drained out of the mixture and has collected on the plate. So the drain down or drainage will be given by this equation A minus B upon C, where A is the final weight of the plate after drain down, B is the initial weight of the plate without drain down and C is the total weight of the sample and this drain down should not be more than 0.3 percent step 7 is to determine tensile strength ratio this is a method for measurement of strength loss resulting from damage caused by stripping of the asphalt from the aggregate under laboratory controlled accelerated water conditioning and tsr is given by this equation i have a separate video on determination of its and tsr you can watch that video but there are some points of difference between TSR of a normal mix and a TCR of TSR of a OGRC mix. Now here, prepare six samples of mixture required for making Marshall specimen. Allow the HMA to cool at room temperature for two hours. Cure the HMA in an oven at 60 degrees centigrade for 16 hours. And after curing, place HMA in an oven at 135 degrees centigrade for two hours before compaction. Then compact mix to 20% air wires using Marshall hammer and generally 25 blows on each face are sufficient to make the sample at air wires. 
Divide the six samples into two subsets of three. The average air wide content for each subset should be similar and one subset should be conditioned and another should be unconditioned. Unconditioned means tested in a dry state and conditioned means tested in a saturated state. For conditioning of a specimen, they are placed in a vacuum container supported a minimum of 25 millimeter above the container bottom. The container is filled with potable water of room temperature such that the specimen have at least 25 millimeter of water above their surface. A vacuum of 87.8 kilopascal is applied for 10 minutes to saturate the specimen. Now this pressure is different from what we discussed in ITS and TSR uh, method. So a specimen is placed in the vacuum container and vacuum of 87.8 kPa is applied. Then vacuum is removed after and the specimen is left submerged in water for approximately 5 to 10 minutes. And then determine the weight of the saturated surface dry specimen after partial vacuum saturation. Determine the degree of saturation using this equation. That is V minus A upon VA, where VA is the volume of air wires. VA is calculated by this equation. Air wires multiplied by volume of the specimen divided by 100. And B is the weight of saturated and dry surface specimen. A is the dry weight of a specimen in air. This TSR test has a strict requirement for a specimen saturation which cannot be more than 80 percent. If the saturation is more than 80 percent, when the temperature changes, the saturated water in a specimen generates the additional stress resulting in the decrease of the split tensile strength rather than water damage. Therefore, the full water rate should be strictly controlled. Now, after that, each sample is wrapped with a plastic film and placed in a plastic bag containing about 10 ml of water and then they are sealed. The plastic bags are placed in a freezer at a temperature of minus 18 plus minus 3 degrees centigrade for 16 to 24 hours and then remove the specimen from the freezer. Place the specimen in water bath at 60 degrees centigrade for 24 hours after removing the plastic film and plastic bag like this. Remove the specimen from the hot water bath and keep in another water bath at 25 degrees centigrade for 2 hours. And then test the conditioned specimen for ITS that is in indirect tensile strength. And TSR is given by this equation ITS of conditioned specimen and ITS of unconditioned specimen. The next step is determination of Cantabro abrasion loss. And this is test also done for aged and unaged samples. This method is carried out in Los Angeles abrasion machine to measure the breakdown of compacted OGFC specimens and the percent weight loss acts as an indicator for durability of OGFC. A compacted specimen is placed in the rotating drum of a Los Angeles abrasion machine and the drum is rotated for 300 revolution without the charge of steel balls. That is important because in case of aggregate, we keep the steel balls also as the charge, but here no charge is placed with a speed of 30-33 RPM. After completion of the test, loss in the weight is calculated for the compacted specimen. A minimum of 5 aged and 5 unaged specimens must be tested. Now, for aging of the specimen, the procedure is like this. Marshall specimens compacted with 25 blows on each face are placed in a heating oven maintained at 60 degrees centigrade for 168 hours, that is 7 days. These specimens are then cooled to 25 degrees centigrade and stored for 5 hours prior to testing for Cantabro abrasion loss. So this is the procedure of aging of the specimen. Then testing procedure is like this that take the initial mass of the specimen to the nearest 0.1 gram and let us say this mass is P1. Place the compacted specimen in the rattler of the Los Angeles abrasion machine. Run the machine for 300 revolutions at the rate of 30 to 33 RPM 
and then remove the specimen from the drum and weight to nearest 0.1 gram and let us say this weight is P2. Then calculate the percent loss by this equation P1 minus P2 upon P1 and this loss the average Cantabro average loss should not be more than 20% for unaged specimen and 30% for aged specimen. In addition to the average loss, the individual result shall not exceed 50% for aged and unaged specimens. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope I have explained all the eight steps clearly. You can write down your comments in the comment box.